Hi, folks. This is Elgin Subway Surfer Bowling, your creative caricature marketing consultant. Um, recently, I was asked by a viewer how I got started in uh, my um, career as a caricature artist. And uh, the reason why the question was asked um, was based on a, another video that I had made concerning art school. And uh, I'm speculating that the reason why the student asked the question was because they wanted a blueprint of sorts, which is understandable, uh, that would give them an idea of, well, if you took this path and it worked for you, perhaps this path would work for me as well, you know, which is a reasonable assumption. And uh, before I give my story, I will just give a short story of uh, an incident that I had with an artist that I admired and respected. He was a children's illustrator back in the 1960s and I had met him at a gallery that I was uh, showing at. We struck up a conversation. I found out who he was and uh, we had lunch a short time later so I came all prepared with my pad and my paper and uh, uh, my tape recorder going and I was asking him questions you know about his career and I was kind of steering the conversation towards how do you do what you do and he sensed my uh, rationale for asking the questions because I wanted a blueprint. And he halted, he very politely told me, son, um, you cannot duplicate my success because my success is based on a lot of factors, including the time period that I lived in, um, the people that I met along the way, the contacts that I made, um, the medium that I was drawing in, and the person that I am, um, you're going to have to, to a certain extent, uh, find your own way of doing this, you know, and not be so much dependent on my particular way because it might not work for you. He understood what I was asking, but very realistically told me you can't duplicate the circumstances. So, I mean, I would say the same thing. I paused because I thought I heard somebody at the door and I, I, I'd have to interrupt the video, which I didn't want to do. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I'd like to say that first. And having said that, uh, how I got started in caricature, um, I was working at a graphic, um, I was working as a graphic artist for very little pay at <laughs> a, a neighborhood newspaper. And uh, my job was to do paste-ups and mechanicals, as they called it in the old days. I had to do, do display ads, full page, quarter page, half page, you name it. I was doing the ads, which consisted of text and artwork. And um, I was also the clipboard artist to draw, you know, different things. And it was a great job in some respects and a lousy job in other respects, especially in terms of salary. I knew that I had a love of doing cartoons and drawing people, you know, and I somehow couldn't find a career in art that merged those two. I had tried uh, doing portraits of people, spending time painting, and found that people um, didn't want to pay me. Once I put in hours and days and weeks of work, the easiest thing for them to do was to say, well, we don't like it, and then I'd be stuck with a bunch of paintings that I couldn't use. And so I was really getting discouraged. Uh, about that. So uh, getting back to my story, uh, I did, I, I noticed that an entertainment company having a party there in Brooklyn needed uh, an ad done. And so I looked at the list of different performers. They had clowns, magicians, jugglers, you know, that things of that nature. And they didn't have an artist, a caricature artist. Now, I knew what a caricature artist was although I had never done caricature, but I knew it had had to do something with drawing faces, which I kind of could do, okay, kind of can do, but had never actually done. So I did the ad for um, Larry Youngstein, that's the owner's name, and he's still there, you know, in Brooklyn on Avenue L. And um, I brought it into him, and I said, hey, how'd you like the ad? He said, well, you know, uh, didn't make any money on it, but it was a good ad. And I asked him if he needed a caricature artist. He didn't know what it was. We sat down. I drew his picture. He hated it. <laughs> but he showed it to his employees, and they loved it. They loved it because I had gotten him dead on. 
Now looking back at the level of art I was able to do then compared to now, I don't think it was very good, but it was good enough for him to take me on as his first caricature artist. I was very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. And from there, I went from parties, did miserably, took too long to draw, was very unconfident, uh, felt like I was stealing people's money because it took me too long and the likenesses weren't really good. But I kept at it and kept at it. And then some, you know, one day it all just clicked based on the, uh, some other circumstances of hanging out uh, with different artists like Kenley Dillard, who I've uh, mentioned, like Alison Geldman, who I met through the NCN, and just being a part of the NCN and working with different artists, seeing their work, and just a lot of practice. So one thing just led to another. But at the bedrock of all of that was practice, 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 and really wanting to do it. Uh, nothing can substitute wanting and earnestly desiring to do something. So uh, that's how I got started. And I hope that advice is valuable, not only to the viewer who asked it, but to those of you out there who are considering a career in um, caricature. Nothing can take the place of persistence. I'm going to come back later on with another tidbit, you know, on how I became a uh, professional artist and the things that I've done. Not for a blueprint, but <laughs> just so you can get somewhat of an idea. This is Elgin Subway Center for Bowling, your creative caricature marketing consultant.